What's happening? What's the business? This your boy Landlord from Alabama. Back with another video, man, on this miserable, miserable Monday. You know what I'm saying? We took the L, you know. It's all good, man. Sometimes you gotta take them L's and you gotta take your lumps. You gotta take your beat down just so you can stand strong next time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we went up the arrowhead and we got beat. You know what I'm saying? It's just plain and simple. We did not make enough plays, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of things that we did wrong or didn't do well enough that got us this loss today. So, you know, let's talk about the game plan. I wasn't a big fan of the game plan. It just wasn't a good setup against this kind of defense, you know what I'm saying? And on my previous video, I did say I think this defense was better than what they were selling us. They got a lot of players back it came to be evident that they was a much better defense than they had been in the previous weeks, you know what I'm saying, with their players back and help. So, you know, you got to take that into account. Then, like, I wasn't a big fan of how Kelly Moore was calling the plays, doing too many behind the line of scrimmage throws, and really wasn't utilizing the run in a creative way and get, putting us in a better position to be successful. He was doing a lot of iffy type stuff, man. And that's what really caused us to have a bad rhythm and a bad game. And, you know, Kelly Moore been on fire all year and head coach and candidate and all that, man. But he really struggled this game against this defense, man. So that's something we're going to have to work on to be able to get him to do some decent play calls and get Dak in a better rhythm. So, okay. Now to the quarterback, man. You know, Dak, my boy, make it rain, Dakota Prescott. He had a very, very bad game this game. I just have to, you know what I'm saying? I, we got to take this one on the chin. He had a bad game. But, you know, his offensive line was playing pretty bad, man. Like, if you put a bad offensive line in front of any quarterback, I don't care if it's Marino, Payton, I don't care if it's Johnny United's like. It's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a struggle for whoever you put there. You know what I'm saying? And this game was a very evident of showing that, you know, if the offensive line play bad, it's going to be rough. That goes for any quarterback. We seen what happened to Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. When his offensive line couldn't block, he got ate up all night, couldn't score a touchdown. That's exactly what happened to us. So, you know, I feel like the offensive line did that no favor at all, all game, you know what I'm saying? But Dak did struggle with some bad throws, you know what I'm saying? Some missed throws, some missed opportunities. But like I said, I really think that's attributed to him really not trusting his offensive line. It's hard to step up and make throws when you're not sure what the line gonna do. Is they gonna hold up or not? So, you know, I think Dak really wasn't trusting his offensive line, man, and that came to be evident, like, he couldn't be confident to step up and make his throws because he felt like they were going to hold up. And then when he did step up and make the throws, wide receiver drops. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing we've been struggling with from time to time this year. And it reared his ugly head again, just like in the Denver game. It's like when we play AFC teams, like we just can't do nothing right all of a sudden this year. But, you know, we had a lot of drops this game, man. I'm talking about CD had a critical drop. Uh, Cedric Wilson had a critical job, drop. We just had a lot of drops, and untimely drops at that, man. Like, when Dak's struggling and trying to make the throw, at least when he do make the throws right, man, we got to bring them in. That We got to catch them in for sure. So, you know, the receivers wasn't doing Dak no favors. The offensive line wasn't doing them no favors. Kellen Moore wasn't doing them no favors. Then on top of that, he just was having a bad game as well. So that's a bad combination, you know what I'm saying? That's a bad combo for a very bad situation, you know what I'm saying? It was very evident that that was just not a good game. For so, okay. Then I think we really underestimated how big the loss was for us not having Amari Cooper that game. Like, Coop really is the engine that makes this whole offense go. It comes to the receiver court. Like, we know that Coop is number one. Like, a lot of people try to knock him down and say CD number one and all that, but 
we see that evidence this game that Coop is the number one wide receiver by far. And we love CD, we love MG, we love Cedric Wilson. But Cooper is the reason why this offense is just unstoppable when he's on the field. Because he he does he requires so much attention that the defense gotta account for him. And that opens up everything for everybody else. See, without Coop on the field, they manning up on us. And like they you know that that's not gonna be successful most of the time. If you man up on our receivers, you will get beat and burned. Normal. But without Coop on the field, that put more stress on your number two wide receiver and your number three wide receiver. That put more responsibility on their shoulders. And it was obvious yesterday they couldn't hold up to it. They couldn't live up to what they what we was asking them to do yesterday. So, you know, Cooper being out was very big and we really undersold that man. Coop means a whole, whole lot to this offense. I got to get a, to play Kyle and Kelly Moore a little, you know what I'm saying, a little leeway, a little wiggle room because who being out with the virus was so all of a sudden, it was like in the middle of the week. And, you know, that probably just disrupted their game plan a whole, whole lot. So we got to give them a little pass for that. But, you know, it's still an NFL. You got to make it work some kind of way. But, you know, I just – then another thing about the coaching, I wasn't a big fan of them shuffling the offensive line this week. Like, if you was going to do that, you should have did that in the bye week. Like, don't wait till a big game on the road to want to try to mess with the offensive line. That's just, in my opinion, we should have just left that alone or did it in the bye week. We shouldn't have just put Connor McGovern in there all of a sudden on the road. Like, that's, that's not a good time to do that type of thing. But, okay. That's enough for the offense. We all aware that it was just bad. Plain old bad. Okay, move on with our life. Throw that tape away, burn it. You know what I'm saying? Do something with it. Don't watch it no more. Just erase that from your mind and move on. Okay. Now the defense. We got to give a, a big shout out to the whole defense. Man, the defense really, really played ball. Like Michael Parsons was a man possessed like he normally be. Boy had two more sacks and a fourth bumble. Like, this boy is a monster, man. We understand that Michael Parsons is the leader of this defense, and he is hell to be reckoned with. Like, Michael Parsons is a monster, man. I can't say enough about this record. Fresh out of college and dominating the NFL already. So, you know, sky's the limit for Michael Parsons. He is going to be a very great Dallas Cowboy, man. And, the future is just super, super bright for Mike Parsons. It's, it's ridiculous. But, you know, the defense as a whole really played a good game, man. And you want to – you hold Patrick Mahomes to 19 points. Like, that, you can't ask much more from your defense at all, man. Them boys did everything they supposed to did. The offense really just couldn't hold up their part of the bargain this week. But – we know nine times out of ten that's not going to be the case moving forward. This just was a stump in the road, you know what I'm saying? It was a recipe for disaster with all the players we missing and combined with a couple bad plays here and there, bad play calling, and that's what results you into an edge. But you know what I'm saying? But the way I look at it, like I said, the defense played well, but from the overall look at this team, man, don't let the media talk you out your team, man. See, when we take a big loss, I go on a blackout. I don't want to hear that no. I don't want to watch ESPN. I don't want to watch First Take. I don't want to watch none of these shows to sway my mind into thinking worse about my team and help me further overreact. Like, I go on a blackout when we lose. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Let's reinvent ourselves. Let's refocus next week, and we'll be fine. But, you know, like I said, man, I just, I can't lie, man. We took that air, but we just got to move on. But when I look at the overall picture, you got to think. We did have five near Pro Bowl caliber players that wasn't on that field. So you can't lie. It's no excuse, but if you sit up there and tell me I can get them five Pro Bowlers back, I would feel a whole lot better about my chances going into that game. 
So that's just the reality of it. We finna get five Pro Bowl caliber players back on this team. So if you tell me I, I got those five players, I like my chances against anybody. And I still stand firmly on that. You know, I'm still here. I ain't ducking, ain't no tail tucking. You know what I'm saying? We still hollering Cowboys Nation, DC for life, all that good stuff, man. So, you know, like I say, man, you know, the algorithm be trying to knock me out of my rhythm. So, you know, I need y'all to like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff for this content, man. Help your boy grow this channel on up where I'm trying to get it to, man. So, you know, other than that, you know what I say, man. 1K, one love, Cowboys Nation. Let's go.